let's like actually talk to the sales psychology. You kind of started to dip into that. You said, I'm not just giving the cookie cutter response. Yeah. What sales technique do you felt like maybe was a different differentiator? What did you do different to get you to average 20 in a day? Like that, okay. you had yeah, to have made some differences. Yeah. So I think the first thing, I'll give five little pro tips, but I think the first thing that's really big is understanding the difference between a close and a sale. I, yeah. don't, I don't think we understand that a lot. We think, oh, a sale is a deal. No, a close is a deal, right? And, you know, I, I'm good friends with O'Donnell through the expert circle, and we've talked a lot with him. He's a biggie on that where he's like, you got to learn how to close, not just sell. Grant Cardone, all these guys, they, they talk about it. So what does that mean? Well, I don't believe that I sold more people in a day than other, other reps out there that are doing four or five did. Okay, I think we sold the same amount. The difference is I closed to I sold. And mm -hmm. so... Uh, aspect number one is, is you need to realize when someone's sold, when are they sold? As soon as they ask you any form of a question, they're sold. Okay. If they don't ask you a question, even, even someone like me, I'm not going to waste my time on them. I think that's what the pros start to learn is it's like, Hey, that person's not qualified next door. You can't sell someone that doesn't ask you a question. It's impossible. They have to have some level of interest in one way or another. Okay. Or they're, or it's you can sell them and they'll just question. back out. It doesn't matter. They got to yeah. just express something back to you. So that's number one is I, I, I've, I uh, qualified very quickly. Okay. Um, once you transition into a close, okay, you think about all these top closers, a close is a conversation. It's no longer a presentation. To sell somebody, my presentation has to be flawless. And I have to think about, that's another thing that I'll say is when you think about a presentation, it isn't just building value. We hear a lot of times I tell my guys in training that value is benefits minus cost. Okay. So we think, what are the benefits? Oh, well, I'm doing the yard and I'm, I'm doing this and, and I'm doing these things. Okay. Yes. Throwing in free things or getting more is a benefit. But a lot of times people don't sign up because they don't trust the back end of it, okay? Mm -hmm. I had a, a funny conversation, and this is a side tangent to that, but I think it's applicable here, is somebody asked me the question, hey, if Grant Cardone got on the doors and Will Ferrell got on the doors, who would sell better? And I think Will Ferrell would sell better. You know why? Is because everyone knows Will Ferrell. So if Will Ferrell was representing a product just because of who he is, they're going to sign up. Does it mean Will Ferrell is giving anything more than anyone else? No, but if Will Ferrell is, you know, he's the face of that, then the back end has to be fine. There's not scheduling issues. It's not a shady company. What I'd say is going to actually be delivered on. And so a lot of times we, we, you know, we think, oh, I just haven't said enough. The person doesn't see the value and that's wrong. The question that needs to be asked is, okay, how much of what I said do you actually believe? And I'll use that all the time on the doors. They look at me and they're like, no. And I'm like, well, let me ask you this. Do you see value in what I'm doing? Yeah. Well, let me ask you, do you, do you actually believe what I'm saying to you? No, I don't believe this. Great. And let's work through that. So I think you have to, when you're going through your, your selling portion, understand I got to address the reliability and consistency aspect, not just the value aspect of this. Once you get a good presentation, and that's short in pest control, that probably is two minutes max. Yeah. Okay. Now I've now targeted that down. Either that person is going to ask me a question or give me an objection, or they're not. They're going to express no interest. If there's no interest, I'm done. I'm gone. If they ask me a question or give me an objection, now I transition into the close. What's the close? It's conversation. Okay, I got to get them to verbalize things and we're just talking back and forth at this point. I'm not giving them a scripted response. I'm not blowing into the contract. I'm not trying to force them into anything. I want them to do it on their own. And I'll say things like this sound to people on doors. I'm like, hey, to be honest with you, if you don't want to do it, don't sign up. I don't care. Right? I don't know enough of your neighbors are probably going to sign up anyway. Here's the deal. If you feel uncomfortable anyway, let's just not do the deal. You, maybe you shouldn't do it. And when I say it like that, all of a sudden people are like, you know what? Let's go ahead and sign up. And so I've figured out that people only say yes when they feel like they can say no. And as soon as I make it feel like, hey, you can say no, I don't care. Done. They're gonna you're opening up to the yes, and you're opening up into the conversation of the close portion of that. So uh, as we talk about the close, and I and I give tips on that. I think one tip that I've learned, and this is something I picked up from Cardone, is always do your deal sitting down. And I'll do it all the time on the doors. I'll just talk to him, and all of a sudden I'm like, hey, it's hot. You care if I sit on your step? No. Well, as soon as I sit on my step, now I'm planted there. I'm not moving. So the person's like, well, I can't kick this guy off. So I sit every deal. 